Good evening, everyone. Uh, I think the last session, so thanks for showing up, I guess. Um, today, we're going to talk about vanilla JavaScript and, uh, you know, what does it mean? Uh, what can we do with it? Uh, do you have, do we have to use the libraries and these kind of things? Uh, so my name is Theodore Biodala. I'm a JavaScript maintainer for Drupal Core for yeah, a couple of years now. Uh, and we've improved Drupal JavaScript a lot in those two years. And so much that we do have some vanilla JavaScript in core and I'll show some of it uh, during the session. So first, a bit of context. The first part, we're going to talk about vanilla JavaScript and what does it mean. And second part, we're going to look at some example of things you can use today, well, depending on some variables in your project. So Drupal 8 uh, vanilla JavaScript, we have three scripts that actually do something and that are useful and that do not rely on jQuery. The first one is active link. So this script is used to highlight links that link to the current page, basically. So lots of selector and, uh, you know, adding a class to links. So it's fairly easy, but no need for jQuery for that. Uh, we have anons.js, which is um, an API to allow screen reader to uh, read something that you want them to, to read. Uh, the, uh, same thing, no use for jQuery uh, for that. And Drupal.js, which is just helper methods for translation, theming, and a few other things as well that really don't need uh, jQuery to, to work. Yay, the image is broken. Uh, <laughs> well, that sucks. Uh, so this was a slide of, uh, you know, a big pot of sugar and some vanilla in it, which is basically the way we, we do scripts in Drupal, other than the three that we saw. We just have like a big piece of JavaScript uh, syntactic sugar and some vanilla JavaScript with it. And it's not really, you know, it's not great because we get addicted to sugar and we use it just everywhere. And we don't even think about can we avoid it or not. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's much bigger than just uh, a Drupal problem. It's a problem with the web because browser actually got much, much better in the, in the last few years. And we have to use the improvement that they made so that they care. Because if we don't use them, they, they will you know, stop implementing new functionality that we need uh, you know, in our job. So it's use it or lose it. And it's not that hard to use it, so you know, we, sh we should make an effort for that. And also, because Drupal 8, uh, I mean, it, it's pretty big. So we have uh, an opportunity to improve the web as a whole by pushing for standards and pushing for, um, you know, like emerging standards. The best example is uh, the responsive image. I mean, Drupal is the first CMS to have a solution in core, well, in its core. Well, I know Drupal 8 is not out yet, but, you know, <laughs> at least we're doing something in core. Um, and this, you know, just help uh, developer use that properly and have browser, uh, you know, notice that there's a big usage of this feature so that they should care about it. Yeah, no image, anyway. Um, but, you know, sometimes vanilla JS is not enough or it's too hard to use. So what kind of uh, criteria can we use to decide if we need to use vanilla JS or if we need to use a library, you know, jQuery or something else? Uh, I think the first one is browser support. Basically, if you need to support IE8, you're very restricted into what you can use. Uh, there are still some of it that you can use. You have polyfills, for example, uh, that you can put on your page to use the same uh, script and make it work on IE8. But, you know, it's not great. Um, then you have code cleanliness. Cleanliness. Sorry, second language. Um, 
I mean, you, your code needs to be clear enough so you know the dependencies you have inside of your code. And if you use a library, you need to use it consistently so you're able to identify and maybe, you know, search and replace whatever you use. Um, so, I mean, you can't just go with it. You need to think a bit about it. So I don't think, for example, Vanilla.js is good for a team that, for a back-end team that needs to write some JavaScript. Probably not the best way to go about, you know, writing your script. But they are front-end uh, professionals, so, you know, they're not the only use case. Uh, that goes into team knowledge. Uh, if your team knows about JavaScript, it's much easier to go with vanilla JavaScript than, you know, just use jQuery. And I guess the last one is, you know, which are your priorities? Uh, performance, maintainability, or development time? So I would argue that uh, vanilla JavaScript doesn't increase development time once you know, once you know it. It's just, you know, a bit of learning to do, but then it's just, you know, as fast as using jQuery. The resulting code might be a bit longer, but, you know, you're not paid by the keystroke, so who cares? Um, and for browser support, we mentioned polyfills. In Drupal, we have a couple of them. We have class list. So this one is to manipulate cl classes on elements. Uh, there's an example afterwards, so we can go back to it. Uh, we have match media to do breakpoints in the JavaScript. So this is used by uh, the responsive image and those kind of things. Uh, and picture fill to do the uh, image source swapping in responsive image uh, on the picture element. So this kind of stuff. But uh, vanilla JS, sometimes it's falling short. And they are saying that are uh, a huge pain to deal with uh, in vanilla JS. Uh, the main one for me, it's event handling. It's, it's a nightmare to do with uh, just J JavaScript. Uh, for example, if you want to react to the focus event on the form input, you need to bind to the form input. You can't delegate that easily in vanilla JavaScript. Whereas jQuery allows you to delegate that very easily because they take care of all the crap, basically. So sometimes it's just uh, much more handy and much more robust to use jQuery than to use uh, vanilla JavaScript. Uh, Ajax handling as well, that's kind of a pain, uh, dealing with uh, error, uh, network problems, these kind of things. The jQuery helps you out on that. Mm. So there should be uh, an image there, but yeah, <laughs> too bad. So micro libraries, um, <coughs> those are very focused libraries that gives you a little bit of sugar uh, at the smallest size possible for one feature. Uh, we use one in Drupal 8 that's uh, DOM ready. And this one is used to initialize Drupal behavior. So when you load the page, the DOM content loaded event, uh, you know, this is DOM ready taking care of that. So we don't, oh, sorry. So we don't have to uh, deal with differences between IE and Firefox and Chrome and all of that. It's like a 1K script, uh, no small, does the job well, and we don't need jQuery to do that. There are a lot of uh, micro libraries available for events, for Ajax, and for templating, for building your own uh, JavaScript framework, like Ember.js, Backbone. I mean, there's all kind of libraries out there. Um, there's a big list in microjs.com if you want to have a look. So during Drupal 8 development, I looked into micro libraries to get rid of jQuery which was kind of my crusade, still is, but you know, <laughs> it's going to take time. Uh, and more specifically, uh, using the bin library for event. Uh, but what I found was that 
the library was way behind uh, jQuery event handling. There was bugs, uh, feature were lacking, custom events were not working properly. I mean, there, was, there were lots of problems. So micro libraries are great, but uh, you can have duplication because if there's a pattern in two different libraries, uh, they're going to implement their own version of it. And then you have you know, a duplicate in your code, basically. The bugs are spread out, different GitHub projects, or even outside of GitHub. Uh, so you can't track the bugs in your library uh, easily. So it's a lot of uh, grunt work to do, basically. And just like Drupal Contrib, the quality is very inconsistent. So it's not great. But there's a hybrid approach that we can use. And the ideally, what we would like uh, is a size of micro library with the quality of jQuery. I mean, that would be great. So who knows about uh, jQuery custom build? OK. Uh, a bit less than half of you. So it means that if you download uh, the GitHub repository of jQuery, you can build your custom version of jQuery only with the parts that you need, basically. So if you don't need the selector engine, which is pretty big, you can remove it and get a smaller jQuery uh, in your code. So I did some measurements. This is uh, as of Monday. If we build all of jQuery, so that's a 2.1.2 uh, version that's going to get, get out at some point. Uh, in 29.1 kilobyte, minified and JZIP. I mean, the, the one we have in core right now, it's 32. So those they improve things over time. Uh, so who can guess uh, Sizzle? Like who says it's more than 10 kilobytes? <coughs> right, so less. Uh, well, it's actually a bit less. What about the core? Who says it's more than two kilobytes? The core of jQuery. Some of you. Uh, the event. So how big is the event? Like five kilobytes, ten kilobytes. So basically, uh, Sizzle is a big part of the total size of jQuery. So it's eight point six kilobytes. The core itself is two kilobytes. That's kind of a lot for not doing much. Uh, and you know, keep in mind it's minified and JZIP. So, you know, as of raw JavaScript, it's pretty big. Uh, but the event is 6.9, and you know that's something I personally can live with, given given the pain that events are to deal with. So, you know, trade-offs. And what's good is that all of this, you know, pass the jQuery test suite. So all the browser bugs and everything is taken care for in six kilobytes. And for example, the bin library, it's uh, 4.5 kilobytes, but it's very buggy. So <coughs> trade-offs. Uh, so I was saying events and Ajax were a pain to deal with. So if we combine the two of them, you know, you have 6.97, you expect around 14, but it's actually 10. So with 10 kilobytes, you can take care of events and Ajax and Link with jQuery, which is pretty good. I mean, with that, I'm happy to use jQuery. Uh, the problem is it's static build. You need to have Node, uh, Node.js, Grunt, and everything to build your jQuery version. So you can't do that on the fly. You can't say, uh, you know, I depend just on the event part of jQuery for my script and have Drupal build that by itself. But it's possible to do. Uh, so Franken jQuery, that's, well, that should be a picture of Frankenstein. Sorry. Um, uh, so that's uh, the name that uh, JavaScript code, uh, jQuery core developer gave to you know, this idea of building your own version of jQuery dynamically. 
uh, this is the issue number and comment number if you want to look it up. And basically it means that it's possible to separate all of jQuery into their, uh, you know, discrete parts, event, Ajax, compile that into files, and have the Drupal dependency system uh, load them dynamically to build your own jQuery version. Which means that if your script only use events for jQuery, you, you depend on that, and only six kilobytes will be loaded for jQuery uh, on your page. Uh, I mean, it needs to, to have a prototype to get some work done to actually work, but it's definitely possible. Uh, yeah, so this one is the example slide. Yeah, just announcing it. Oh, this one works, good. Uh, so if you want to use vanilla JavaScript, there are a lot of uh, methods added to different objects in the JavaScript language uh, that you can use. So this table is going to show IE 9 from 11, I think, uh, and Firefox, uh, Chrome, and some other, you know, uh, JavaScript interpreter. So there's a lot of green in there, which means you can rely on all of this uh, to work. So not everything works properly, but you know, as a basic, uh, in the basic use case, it does work. So let's look at arrays, for example. So you're used to, maybe sometimes you use jQuery to loop of an array, like jQuery.each, uh, I mean, don't do that, please. Use at least uh, a for loop or while or whatever, but not jQuery.each. Um, but JavaScript array has a, have a for each method now that you can use, and the function that you pass to this uh, for each is going to be executed for each element of your array. So if you like, uh, if what you like into uh, jQuery.each is a new function and a new scope you get for each iteration, you can have that with vanilla JavaScript as well. Uh, then you have uh, the map method to build a new array based on uh, the array that you have. You can filter. There are a few more methods as, as well, like reduce, uh, sum, every um, bunch of things. If you like to do functional programming, that's the kind of stuff that you want to have uh, available. <coughs> uh, Arrays, usually you use that with DOM elements. You select a bunch of DOM elements. You want to loop over those elements to you know, add a class, change a style, do something like this. So it's not you know, as pretty as jQuery, but it works the same. And you don't need to load 29 kilobytes of jQuery basically. And you can use the same thing for uh, map, uh, sum, every, reduce, all of this. You can use them on uh, DOM collections. Uh, objects. I see a lot of time people using jQuery each to loop over objects as well, uh, because you know it's easy to do, they know how, how that works. Um, but the problem with that is that you don't filter the properties, so you actually go up the dependent, the, uh, the prototype chain, and you get every property that your object inherits, which is a bad way to loop over an object. Uh, there was a number of bugs in Drupal core that were caused by unfiltered, you know, looping over an object. Uh, now you can use the object.key function that will return an array of index of your object index. And since in, it's an array, you can use for each afterwards to loop over that. So you don't need to have a filtered for loop to go over your object. Uh, and it's, you know, it's really handy. It makes also the code a bit clear because you can separate the for each function, that way, you know, you separate what it does and where it does it. I mean, it's just cleaner. So anyone already uses those kind of stuff? 
Yeah? Not many of you? So, I mean, so there's a few more examples, but what is stopping you from using those kind of stuff? Is it because you know jQuery or because you? I? But this, oh, well, which version of I? Because you have polyfill to add like the object.key function that easy to add. Uh, same for the array prototype stuff. So is it because you don't want to load the polyfills or? Right. Uh, well, I mean, we'll get back to it. We still have, you know, a lot of minutes to talk about that. Uh, function. Who, who use uh, jQuery proxy uh, method? Usually in events. Uh, so this you can use uh, the bind function uh, to, to say which, uh, to which object this refers to. So inside the do something function, when you write this, it will refer to this object. So it's just like the jQuery proxy used in the basic case, because the jQuery proxy does a bit more stuff that I, you know, that shouldn't do, but hey, I didn't write it, so I can't complain. Uh, selection. So I said Caesar was uh, eight kilobytes. And usually you can, you know, uh, avoid that. Because as we are working in Drupal, we can control the markup to some extent. So <laughs> we can make sure the, the selector are simple enough for you to use in query selector and query selector all. Who knows about this function? Who use that instead of jQuery? Uh, okay, not many. <laughs> And you know you can use like uh, query selector all and pass the result to jQuery to do stuff. You know, it's possible. Uh, so the first one is going to select all the elements that match the CSS selector. So everything that has an active class will be selected. And in the second case, it's going to select the first element matching your CSS selector. So here there's an ID, but if you have a class, it's going to be the first element with this class on the page. So if you have several things to select, query selector all. If you have one, query selector. Because usually what you see in uh, jQuery stuff is selecting every element of a class and then first. You know, so just to get the first one, you don't need to do that. So I was talking about class manipulation. Uh, I mean, a lot of those things got improved in the browser because jQuery came up with it, and that was used by a lot of developers. So they said, you know, because a lot of people use that, they just put that into native JS so everyone can use it without jQuery. <coughs> so it's the same as, you know, remove class, add class in jQuery but uh, native. Uh, so remove add, uh, pretty straightforward. Toggle, you can say uh, if, that's, uh, if that class is in the element, uh, remove it. If it's not, add it. And in the, you know, some version of browser, there's a second parameter to say, uh, like a Boolean parameter to say if you want to add it or remove it. But yeah, since that's not supported everywhere, Let's just not talk about that. Uh, and contains just, you know, does my element have this class or not? Uh, and then the DOM. Who still use inner HTML sometimes? Okay, so you use, I guess, jQuery, append, insert before, insert after. So there's a native way of doing all of that. And it's actually since IE4 that it's in browser, and since Firefox, Firefox 8. And Firefox was the last one to add uh, this method. So basically, the HTML is just a string of you know, whatever HTML you have uh, that you want to add on your page. And the position is going to be where do you want to add that. Uh, so here you have before begin, after begin, 
before end, after end. So the position is one of those four uh, choice. And you know, it adds your HTML wh wherever you say you want to add it. And it's actually much faster than inner HTML in most cases because there's less work for the browser to do. And it doesn't mess up, like if you have um, uh, event listeners and some kind of stuff in your, in your elements, inner HTML trash that, this doesn't. So, you know, you can use that instead of jQuery for a lot of, you know, adding HTML to the page. I have no idea what this image was, but it was pretty good. Um, so all that is to say that when we talk about mobile first, it really is vanilla first in case of you know, JavaScript. CSS, maybe there's another meaning and everything, but for JavaScript, it's really try to get rid of any library you use to be as fast as possible on mobile. Um, I don't know who went to the uh, session about delivering content under one second to mobile. Yeah, a few of you. So, I mean, if you add JavaScript to the page, it just had 300 milliseconds. So, that's a lot. And also, I would like people to help make the front end jQuery stuff happen so, uh, so that we can uh, separate out jQuery and build whatever you, we need depending on your script dependencies. Because right now, uh, in Drupal 8, you need to declare all the dependencies for your script. So the more specific we are, the better it is. So who knows about the dependency stuff in Drupal 8, actually? All right, so quickly for those who don't know, uh, if you write a script in Drupal 8, is probably going to use jQuery, so you need to declare jQuery as a dependency of your script. Uh, same if you use anything from Drupal.js, you need to declare a dependency. Because if it's not declared, Drupal will not load it. So in Drupal 7, we just assume you wanted uh, jQuery, so it's loaded on every page, even if you don't use it. And that's a big you know, performance issue, actually. Yes, there's an issue about uh, Drupal 7 and jQuery. There's a patch also that needs review and that works. So there's a sprint tomorrow. You can, you know, help out. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so that's about it, about uh, what I have to present. I got a few questions for you. So is there anyone who has code that kind of wonder how it can be made to use vanilla JavaScript? Also, if you, have, if you do use vanilla JavaScript, how do you draw the line between uh, using a library or using just JavaScript? What's the threshold? And also a big one is what can jQuery do, uh, Drupal do, to help you as developer you know, rely less on libraries and more on proper JavaScript? So if you, yeah, you can go to the mic. I think I'd just like to, I'd like to say that the whole this whole concept of the vanilla JavaScript is something that's really true to my heart because it's um, over the past few years I've been I set myself a bit of a challenge two years ago and I said mm -hmm. I'm going to put myself on a jQuery ban so I banned <laughs> myself from using jQuery and I did everything vanilla <laughs> JavaScript and it wasn't actually it was a challenge at first but then after a while it actually made not only my JavaScript better but it, there's so many things you can do and it's such a beautiful programming language especially like Node.js stuff and all sorts of things so um, and I've had so many struggles with uh, Drupal's jQuery stuff with like you have to install the jQuery update module you yeah. have to do all sorts of things like that. So um, I think it's not really on one of your questions, but it's the main <laughs> the main thing I have to ask is how do I how do I get involved? Like say tomorrow, or uh, are there specific sprints to do JS stuff in in Drupal and things? So I wasn't planning a sprint, but if people are interested, we can do that tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, so what was the main problem you had when you banned yourself from jQuery? Like the, the main thing that that was uh, nice about it. I, I think um, at first it was uh, like the, 
the selectors and that sort of stuff got, yeah, that, that worked. At first, there was things like that relied on, like, the animations and that sort of thing right. that I was using. And then I realized that actually that was a really good uh, eureka moment. And I realized if you do it in CSS with transitions and CSS transitions, you just change the class. And if you change the class from one class to another, I now don't do any animations in jQuery or JavaScript at all. I just change the class. And CSS transitions are so beautiful now. You can mm. actually do background colors. You can do everything. And it's just so much cleaner and just faster. So I think the events and the Ajax stuff is still something I, I do use uh, jQuery stuff for. But you can parse JSON in, in most, most things now. You can do, you can yeah, do yeah. some, you can do some stuff. Um, I, I think a really good resource is like the Mozilla website where they yes. have the polyfills and something like that for each question that got asked over, over there, which was um, just not, uh, not being able to support IE8 and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. It's just like seven lines of JavaScript that you put in on the, from the Mozilla website in a separate file that's called like ie.js or something. And that shouldn't put people off from doing this sort of stuff because there's so many beautiful things and they're really well documented and I think people should be using them more. So, sorry. Thanks. So what's uh, preventing you from using vanilla JavaScript? in your project? Hmm. Yeah, so jQuery plugins. Um, yeah, also, one thing I didn't really mention in my talk is that when you review your code to see if you can use uh, vanilla JavaScript or not, sometimes there, there's code that just is not needed. I mean, there's a lot of craft in the code that can be removed or rewritten uh, in a better way. And I guess sometimes plugins also, you use a plugin, but maybe there's no need for it. Well, I don't know. It depends on, on the use case, but. So it's just general laziness. If nobody, talk, if nobody talks, I'm going with that. And you're all lazy. <laughs> <laughs> jQuery, you write jQuery five star, right? So, but it's kind of a habit, right? Because sometimes, if you know how to use vanilla JavaScript, you can get similar speed. Well, I guess it depends on what you do, but yeah. Yeah, and sometimes of bad quality as well. But yeah. <laughs> so I guess it comes down to a skill level. I mean, you're lazy and unskilled so far, so <laughs> <laughs> you better speak up. <laughs> yeah. So, what you mean? You mean I didn't really hear what. Yeah. Oh right, put it feels. But the thing is, uh, with polyfills, usually it's i8 that's a problem, and i8 still understand conditional comments. So, for example, the class list polyfills that we have in Drupal core, it's within a conditional comment for i8, uh, i9 and under. So, the proper browser don't get, you know, the extra script. But yeah, sometimes it's not only i that's a problem. So. It depends, but usually it is. 
And I mean, if you don't use jQuery, there's a, a lot of JavaScript you don't load. So, you know, even if some browser have to load the polyfill, it's not that bad. Yeah? Right, so the problem is time or backend people. <laughs> and also, well, I'm not going to write a responsive slideshow within the budget of a single project where there are solutions that have been worked on for months. I, I just don't have the money to start my own custom slideshow. Right, and the stability of existing scripts, I guess, yeah, yeah. and feature set, which is a fair point. For some use case. <laughs> well, I, also, I mean, there's a big difference between having a website and an application, yeah. sort of. So, if you do a JavaScript application or one page, whatever, like the very fancy stuff, headless, uh, headless Drupal and all, vanilla JavaScript is probably going to to be a huge pain to deal with. But most websites are not like that. It's just, you know, uh, an accordion or a menu, drop down menu some of some kind. And for that, you don't really need jQuery. You can use some JavaScript to do that. So, who has a fairly simple website with not a lot of interaction to take care of? Nobody? So, you're all doing like. Application and web, whatever number, point zero. That's surprising. <coughs> so, what kind of industry are you working in? There's no NGO, no education people in here. Yeah, and it's very complex. Or. No. Yeah, so, yeah, some side. So is that a team issue or is that convenience? Right. Right, so just convenience. So what if we had like the front end jQuery stuff where you have to decide which part of jQuery you depend on? Like would you use something like that or would you just you know, use jQuery and be done with it? Well, actually, the jQuery is getting smaller All right. because it was uh, it was 32 uh -huh. a few months ago. Now it's 29. So, right. Right. So, I guess you're saying performance is not high on your priorities. Because, I mean, uh, it on the side it is. Yeah, yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. So, it depends on the site. So, who here tried to browse without JavaScript enabled on website? Yeah, so you've, you've seen the difference. It's like way, way faster. And part of the reason is because of all the scripts. and jQuery is pretty big, so, I mean, question? Yeah, so for like uh, D8 contrib space, I think there's been a kind of long-standing expectation, or maybe not D8 necessarily specifically, but, you know, Drupal and jQuery have really grown hand in hand. Um, you know, the jQuery update module is this, you know, probably one of the most popular modules on D.O. Um, 
So now that kind of developers expect that, you know, I'm going to download Drupal, I'm going to get some kind of antiquated version of jQuery, and then I'm going to install jQuery update. Aren't we just saying to them, we're taking jQuery out of core potentially, and now the first module you have to go install is this one that just jams jQuery back in because all your clients want to use it and all your contrib modules are going to need it too. Have you thought anything about that? There? Well, so that was a fair question when, uh, so when two years ago when I started the issue, remove jQuery from core, which got renamed to reduce dependency on jQuery. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I got enough you know, publicity on that. Um, it, it was a concern that we would remove jQuery from core, but it's not actually what the plan was. It's more like a jQuery UI situation where it's in core, but nothing uses it. Oh, well, not a lot. Um, so there, there's still going to be the full jQuery in core, but the way we use it, I think we could improve it, basically, and make sure that people who know what they're doing are, well, know what they're doing and can do it. Thank you. Anything else? Oh, yeah. I think um, removing jQuery from core wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. <laughs> Maybe not feasible, but wouldn't be bad because Contrib would have to stop and think, and do I need jQuery? Can I solve this with vanilla JavaScript? Which would, in my opinion, be a good thing. Um, so, yeah. Well, in the mind too, but <laughs> uh, well, talking as a maintainer, it's it's really hard because then you get lots of complaints. Yeah, yeah. Of that course. are fair, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, it was just a comment on on the fact that people would, if it was removed from core, would just go and download jQuery update or something similar, which I don't think would necessarily be the case. I mean, uh, if it's not in core, people would try. Well, I think if you write a module, you you try to have. Uh, <laughs> have a small amount of dependencies, so mm -hmm. adding a depend dependency to a module that adds jQuery mm -hmm. just adds on that. Uh, so to some extent I agree, but then you have the problem of fragmentation that now we are standardized on jQuery. So yeah. there are lots of things we don't have to deal with just because we everyone uses jQuery. So if yeah. we put a new, well if we allow people very easily to add, to use a new uh, library, mm -hmm. it might be more pain than than it's worth. And yeah. now with the headless stuff, people are going to use whatever. So, yeah, okay. Um, I mean, I agree, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. reality is a bit Thanks. harder. Yeah. And also, as a side note uh, about the versions, so Drupal 8 is going to update to the latest version of jQuery all the time. So there's not going to be a four years old jQuery version in Drupal core. Like right now we run with uh, 2.1. So no IE8 support and those kind of stuff. And whenever there's a new release, uh, for a point release of Drupal, so 8.1 would get the latest jQuery version available at this time. Uh, because right now there's much less breaking between jQuery release. Uh, so we can do that fairly easily. Who uses uh, jQuery update here? Right, so yeah, almost everyone. <laughs> All right. I guess if there's no more. Oh, yeah? There was a big problem where I broke views for a while because there was a, because you updated jQuery update to the latest version. Right. So Yeah, so Views UI breaking, uh, well, it won't happen again because Views is in core, yeah. so we have to fix it. <laughs> hmm? Yes, yeah, it kind of sucks, but yes. <laughs> yeah.
So is it still using that now? It's support. Yeah, it's support. I think we removed that. Yeah, because uh, when you go with jQuery 2, you have the migrate jQuery plugin stuff. And we, on purpose, didn't use it when we ported everything to 2. Point, uh, something. So it shouldn't use it now. <laughs> yeah, so it won't happen. If it does, we should write a patch. Yeah? Um, if we already started with versioning and deprecated properties, mm. um, are there any plans on uh, relying on external libraries for module developers? Like the library is module, but I think it doesn't are there any plans to make it work with this whole attached array? Um, well, I mean, it, it does work. Uh, so the problem is the libraries module is it's kind of complicated. On purpose, it was not put into core because it's you know very complicated for uh, a sp very specific use case that doesn't happen usually. Uh, uh, but the attached stuff, the new library declaration, so everything that works is going to work with libraries. So there's no new API that's going to be used. It just, uh, you okay, know. Because I, I, I tried to uh, write the module which depends on an external library, which shouldn't be inside the module, but downloaded yeah, yeah. into the libraries directory. And it was hard to figure out how to uh, make this library uh, a Drupal internal library yeah, yeah. without running through uh, library info alter and rewriting stuff. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't think you can get away with not using library info alter and those kind of things. Okay. Uh, I don't know what are the plans for the library module, uh, but I mean usually when people develop projects and they have external libraries, it end up in a theme somewhere. It's only for contrib modules that's, that it's a problem. And I don't know what the solution for from the library is. Yeah, that's module. what yeah. my question would be. Thank you. But we can see that tomorrow. Yeah. For example. Who's going to stay tomorrow for the sprint? Everyone's going to work on JavaScript? Almost, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One. <laughs> uh, well, I guess we're done. Thank you very much for coming.